Welcome to our worship today on Coromila Sunday. I come to you as a member of the Southwest Coromila Support Group. We aim to work and to promote the work of peace and recon reconciliation uh, within the context of Coromila in Northern Ireland. We would have been meeting together in person this coming Sunday, however that cannot be. And so Alex Wimberley, who is the leader of Coromila at this moment in time, has uh, produced some liturgy for us to be able to use together, to share together. The ethos of the place is peace and reconciliation was begun during the Troubles in Northern Ireland and continues its work throughout Northern Ireland and sharing peace and reconciliation throughout the world and is now uh, seen and working within many lands. So this resource for today, this service that we have, is themed it's on the theme of the story of one family. And we will be drawing references from the Book of Ruth and also for the Gospel reading for the 14th of March from John. Each of us pray that this service will inspire a desire to keep our different histories within the context of a shared story and with the hope of a future where we can all share who we are together in peace. There is a symbol, a sign if you like, which is outside the Ballycastle uh, community centre where people go to stay. And Coromila means the hill of harmony. But that peace and reconciliation is not only to be found when people meet together in that place. It is meant to be something that which we take out into the world in our hearts. That yearning for us to find ways to resolve conflict, to be at one, to be people who are heard and hearing others, to be who God has made us to be. Let's take a moment of silence. Let us mark how our different paths have brought us together today. We have come from different places and with different stories to worship our God together. Let us celebrate the ways in which our stories now overlap to tell of God's mercy and his love. May we be one in the family of God. Come, let us worship. And so we begin our worship with our first hymn.
Let's come before God and remember those moments when we have not been as we could be. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves in failing to name the hurt and the harm of which we have been part. We keep hidden from God's love what God can heal. And with courage, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Holy and loving God, we are prone to carve the world into us and them, good and bad, in and out. We confess that in fear of the unknown and the unfamiliar, we turn to those with whom we already agree. We fail to believe that to follow you is to become something new and look instead to ourselves to find something that we can call God. Give us faith to trust that you will be where you call us to go. Give us courage to seek you in the unknown, in the face of the stranger and in what we have yet to become together. Lead us into better relationship with those from whom we have separated ourselves, seeking forgiveness whenever necessary and extending forgiveness wherever possible. Bring us back as one family held in your embrace and allow us to find what is holy and loving in you. Amen. Now Sylvia is going to read for us from the book of Ruth. A reading from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, beginning at verse 15. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realised that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now sing together our second song. Here are reading from the Gospel, read by Alex Wibberley. Hear the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to John. 
Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. We now listen as Alex speaks to us. Greetings to you in peace from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Alex Wimberly. I am the leader of the Koremila community. It is a joy to be with you in this way, even if we are physically separated. I am very grateful for your support of Koremila and for your invitation to preach on Koremila Sunday today. On behalf of our community, thank you. Let us now pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. A year ago, I scuttled my plans to travel to Coventry for Corimula Sunday. At the time, the decision seemed like it might be overly cautious. Now it feels as if a, it was a lost chance to have actually gotten out of the house for once. As we come around into a full 12 months of pandemic in this part of the world, the talk in our home, at least, has increasingly been about a desire to travel. For us, we want to see relatives back in the States. We want to get on a plane. I mean, we would just love to be in an airport at this point and see other people. Such a desire speaks in part to the normal we have lost. The frequency of travel we had become accustomed to may also say something about the rather spoiled life we lead. But it also speaks to a complicated story of belonging and place. Our three children were born here in Ireland, but their family is there in the States. I am now watching helpless from afar as my own parents struggle with complications of aging and COVID. Our own distinct story is playing out both here and there at the same time. But our experience of having international connections as a part of our family story is a common one. We all have family trees with branches extending far beyond our local patch. That's why one of the best things that the public theologians Glenn Jordan and Padre Gotuma have done in their contemporary reading of the book of Ruth is to ask those of us who live on these islands of Britain and Ireland to consider how our own personal family histories can be told in terms of migration and border crossing. Take a moment to consider where your family's sense of home has changed through the generations, how it's been uprooted, transported, perhaps returned with new ties reaching to different parts of the world. Think of how your own extended family includes people from here and there with cultures different to your own and loyalties that may seem incompatible with those of your ancestors. Think as well of how the histories of empire and diaspora 
have given the people of Britain and Ireland links around the globe and have, as a result, knitted homegrown identities more tightly to one another. The story of Ruth, which fuses the story of the Israelites with the story of their close adversaries, the Moabites, through the family of David, is a story of migration, of ethnic stereotypes, of marital unions, and international relations. A story of, man, of a man from Judah going to Moab, a story of a woman from Moab going to Judah, and a story telling the more complicated truth that the great king of Israel, the hero David, had the DNA of the enemy in his own blood. The message for the audience then and now is that the supposed them are actually us. Perhaps not in the story we tell or the story we know best, but in a history we cannot untangle, nor that we should. For the family history of David and through him Jesus is a story about redemption and salvation, not through purification or separation, but through connections, even those, perhaps especially those connections that cross borders and generations and enter into areas of enmity, lingering distrust, and unprocessed grief. The story of the greater us then certainly seems in need of retelling as we move into 2021 and into a new era of relationships within and between these islands of Britain and Ireland. The all too predictable crisis of where and how to mark a border between the UK and the EU makes this year, the year of centenary of Irish partition and the formation of Northern Ireland, all the more fraught with questions of belonging, of empire, of independence and interdependence, of who they are and where we begin. Brexit brings into fuller light the fragile peace that the Good Friday Agreement achieved, the permeable, fluid border and freedom of identity to be British and or Irish that the European Union permitted now faces the potential of a harsher divide that could force a decision as to who is in and who is out. But no matter what side we end up on, our shared past will be coming with us to both sides of a border, not just to Belfast or Derry, but to Coventry and Exeter, Dublin and Galway. That's in part why when I saw the gospel passage for this Sunday would be from John chapter 3, I got a bit concerned. To begin with, I find it a difficult passage. I associate it with proselytizing and with a type of patriarchal evangelism that has sounded less like good news to me and rather more like a threat of con uh, condemnation to those who do not choose correctly. Whosoever believeth in him, I can still see the words painted on signs at the side of the highways back home, accompanying the question of where I want to spend eternity. A message then that means to connote love for the whole world arrives in my ear too often with a cry of division, with an insistence on right and wrong, with the definitive declaration of who is in and who is out forever. Not an easy message for Corimila Sunday, nor for Mothering Sunday, for that matter, what with all the hymns and hisses and he's. This seems to be a message only about the Father and his only Son, and of our no-option decision to believe only in him. And yet, equipped with the complicating history of Ruth, this reading from John becomes more complicated itself and in turn more hopeful, I believe, for our troubling time. Jesus is making a broad statement about God and the world, yes, but he is also reminding us of his own complicated family story. As unique as it is, Jesus' family story resembles 
ours in that it is that it too is one of migration and blending, one in which worlds are mixed and intermingled within a shared bloodline. In these verses, Jesus refers to himself as both Son of Man and Son of God, one person sharing two lineages, a descendant like us of earth creatures, and yet the only begotten third person of the Trinity, human, divine, earthly, heavenly, a perfect being whose perfection is only complete in the overlapping of realms, the interweaving of stories, the mixing of heaven and earth, of Moab and Judah, of them and us into one shared story. In Jesus, God is saying, my story includes your story. I am not complete without you. And as I think about my own children now living in this part of the world, a part of the world deciding once again where to put borders and how to tell its story, I wonder what history they will learn and how complete it can be. Living in Northern Ireland, will they learn a history of Britain that includes a part of Ireland? A history of Ireland that begins only a century ago. Can it be one that takes into account the shared histories of centuries past and this last century past? One that will not try to unravel the threads of connection between these islands including those that have become tighter over these past 25 years. I also wonder what history kids are learning in the schools of Coventry and Exeter, whether their history includes Irish history, and whether the last century in this crucial relationship between these islands is even mentioned. And at the same time, I wonder what our children are learning these days about Christianity. Whether it is only tied up with notions of belonging to a certain sect we pretend is purer than it is, or if it still means belonging to a messy world that God continues to love. There is something deeply troubling in the language from our gospel reading about how we may have condemned ourselves already through the darkness of our own ignorance through a desire to hide the ugliness of past deeds. And yet there is something I still need our children to know from these verses about the salvation that has come through an interconnected, blended family story, through a savior who is both son of man and son of God, both Judean and Moabite, both enemy and friend, both judgment and forgiveness, both them and us, a message about how we might still create a shared future by bringing our divisions and past deeds further into the light. That is a message that, despite its messiness, sounds more and more like good news to me. The message that without each other's histories, our own telling of history is incomplete. A message for the people of Belfast, Dublin, Coventry, and Exeter, and all the places where the branches of our family tree extend. The good news that I am not complete without you. In the name of the Creator and the Christ and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Let us take a moment of silence to reflect on what we have heard. We sing together our next song.
share the collect for today. God, the author of our life, in Christ you tell us how your story is incomplete without our story, and that this story is one that brings to light our fuller selves, saved by grace. May we resist the temptation to separate our story from those of others, or to listen only to tales that make us into heroes or victims. May we gladly hear your fuller story, told in part through the lives of those we call other and those we have hurt without knowing, or those hurts we have failed to acknowledge. Then may we see ourselves in a fuller light and as part of the life you alone can bring to completion. Amen. Hilary is now going to lead our time of prayer. As we come to our time of prayer, we start by remembering that one of the possible translations of Corimila is place of lumpy crossings, maybe referring to the choppy waters off the north coast of Ireland near Rathlin Island. Many things in life can cause lumpy crossings, and so we pray. God of the earth, we were brought to a rocky outcrop, a place of islands, Rathlin, Ireland, Britain, Isle, Jura. The crossings are not wide, but they are deep. In this in-between place, this place of lumpy crossings, we have been formed. And now we are at a time where our crossings with each other are deep and wide and fractured. May we be sustained by the hope of reconciliation. May our difficult differences not divide us. May our encounters with each other be transformative. May our listening bring understanding. May our resistance be changed by generosity. May our love, feeble as it sometimes is, lead to more love. We ask this as people on pilgrimage towards our deepest vocation, to be one as God is one. Amen. There is a deep divide between us and God, us and each other, even us and those we love. And so we pray for reconciliation. God of compassion and healing, we pray for all those separated from family who are feeling the ache of being divided from loved ones, whose sense of home is split by distance and circumstance. We pray also for ourselves as people divided from each other by borders and histories, by politics and identities. May we find ourselves more and more at home with one another. May we find peace in ourselves so we can build peace together. And may your power to overcome our separation, to reconcile heaven and earth in the person of Christ, be known in this world you love so dearly 
through the grace we extend to others, through the love we ourselves receive. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. And we pray for God's work in and through us, bearing in mind the part each of us plays in the divisions and healing of mankind. Jesus, friend of sinners, your perfection reminds us that our faults are a given, but our broken relationships are not. Help us to worry less about who is right and who is wrong, and more about making things better. For yours is the only perfect human life. Ours are to be lives of repair and reconciliation, and therefore lives containing something divine. Amen. Let's share together in that prayer which Jesus left for each one of us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we take with us a prayer from Coromila, a prayer for courage. Courage comes from the heart, and we are always welcomed by God, the croy of all being. We bear witness to our faith, knowing that we are called to live lives of courage, love and reconciliation in the ordinary and the extraordinary moments of each day. We bear witness to our failures and our complicity in the fractures of our world. May we be courageous today, may we learn today, and may we love today as we go out back to these places where we live, where we are, and where we are your hands and your feet. Let's share in our final song.
So as we go, we ask that you would go and give us, as we go, we ask that we may be blessed. We may be blessed on the roads that we walk. We may be blessed in the homes that we cannot leave. We may be blessed in the conversations on the phone or via the internet. That we may be blessed in our longings and our yearnings and in those moments of happiness and joy. The blessing, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those whom you hold in your heart this day and forevermore. Amen. Corrymeela is Northern Ireland's oldest peace and reconciliation centre. We were founded in 1965, before the Troubles began, by Ray Davey and students from Queen's University. Corrymeela grew organically from the original members, now with 150 members, dozens of volunteers and 40 full-time staff who are committed to this witness of peace. We have over 6,000 people through our programmes a year at our centre in Ballycastle and out in the community. We live in a world of beauty and burden, of vision and violence. Corrie Miller brings people together to encounter each other in a way that makes a world of difference a world you want to live in. Our vision is a world where people live and learn well together. Corrie Miller is a place for meeting and welcome, where we can hear stories in a safe place, explore the power at the heart of those stories, take risks of trust, and together find ways to live and learn. We work alongside people from youth and education groups, family and community organisations, faith communities and political parties. Using dialogue, analysis, conflict theory, experiential play, art, storytelling, learning and listening, we help groups embrace difference and have important conversations. We believe in welcome and hospitality. Corrymeela is an open village for all people of goodwill. We practice hospitality because temporary communities with food, firesides, hospitality and new connections are the places where serious conversation and transformation can happen. Corrymeela's founder was Ray Davy. During the Second World War, Ray, a pacifist volunteer for respite camps, was captured and incarcerated in a prisoner of war camp in Dresden. In the annihilations of war, Ray saw humanity's capacity for inhumanity. He was profoundly changed. Ray returned to work as a chaplain in Belfast. There, he became concerned at the tensions brewing between people of different political, religious and ideological differences in Northern Ireland. He gathered people around him in the chaplaincy. Corrymeela grew out of these gatherings. This part of Ireland is known for many things, one of which is our fractured political and religious landscape. We have much further to go, but in so many ways things have improved. There have been lessons learnt. Corrymeela has been a place where people from other places also come to share, teach and learn. India, Korea, Pakistan, Colombia, South Africa, Israel, Palestine and Sri Lanka. 
People from places of conflict come here to explore how to learn from the edges, hear important stories, work for change, engage at a radical centre in a radical centre. We believe that there is a powerful truth to be discovered in the stories of those who have been marginalised or ignored. We try to listen well. We try to learn well. We want to live well together. Corimila is a place of generosity. Our work is made possible by around 80,000 volunteer hours every year. Many of our volunteers have been working on the site for decades, generously giving time and service to the work. The faith community of Corimila has grown too, with 150 members, 70 associate members and thousands of friends around the globe. We gather around the symbols of the turf cross, an open Bible and the lit candle. Together we make commitments to be engaged with the world at its points of fracture, faith, pain and potential. Corimila is people. We are young people, middle-aged and old people. We are people of doctrine and people of doubt. We engage with the differences of our world. We disagree with each other and we seek to disagree agreeably. We know we're part of the problems of the world. We work hard to be part of the solution. We are people of prayers and protest, curiosity and questioning, work and learning. We believe in a world of difference. We believe we can learn and live well together. We are Corrie Mila and you are always welcome.